This is the Word of God, a powerful, life-changing set of books including history, law, poetry, prophecy, the gospel of Jesus, and more. In only about 15 minutes per day, you can read the entire Bible in a year and see and hear what God has done. Let's read. 1 Kings chapter 18 After many days, the Lord's word came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, show yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the earth. Elijah went to show himself to Ahab. The famine was severe in Samaria. Ahab called Obadiah, who was over the household. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly, for when Jezebel cut off the Lord's prophets, Obadiah took one hundred prophets and hid them fifty to a cave, and fed them with bread and water. Ahab said to Obadiah, Go through the land, to all the springs of water and to all the brooks. Perhaps we may find grass and save the horses and mules alive, that we not lose all the animals. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. As Obadiah was on the way, behold, Elijah met him. He recognized him and fell on his face and said, Is it you, my lord Elijah? He answered him, It is I. Go, tell your lord. Behold, Elijah is here. He said, How have I sinned, that you would deliver your servant into the hand of Ahab to kill me? As the Lord your God lives, there is no nation or kingdom where my Lord is not sent to seek you. When they said, He is not here, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they didn't find you. Now you say, Go tell your Lord. Behold, Elijah is here. It will happen. As soon as I leave you, the Lord's Spirit will carry you I don't know where, and so when I come and tell Ahab, and he can't find you, he will kill me. But I, your servant, have feared the Lord from my youth. Wasn't it told my Lord what I did when Jezebel killed the Lord's prophets, how I hid one hundred men of the Lord's prophets with fifty to a cave, and fed them with bread and water? Now you say, Go tell your Lord, behold, Elijah is here. He will kill me. Elijah said, As the Lord of armies lives before whom I stand, I will surely show myself to him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. When Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, Is that you, you troubler of Israel? He answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house, in that you have forsaken the Lord's commandments and you have followed the Baals. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel to Mount Carmel, and four hundred fifty of the prophets of Baal, and four hundred of the prophets of the Asherah, who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent to all the children of Israel, and gathered the prophets together to Mount Carmel. Elijah came near to all the people, and said, How long will you waver between the two sides? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. The people didn't say a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I, even I only, am left as a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are four hundred fifty men. Let them therefore give us two bulls, and let them choose one bull for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on the wood, and put no fire under it. And I will dress the other bull, and lay it on the wood, and put no fire under it. You call on the name of your God, and I will call on the Lord's name. The God who answers by fire? Let him be God. All the people answered, What you say is good. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one bull for yourselves, and dress it first, for you are many, and call on the name of your God, but put no fire under it. They took the bull which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, and nobody answered. They leaped about the altar which was made. At noon, Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is deep in thought, or he has gone somewhere, or he is on a journey, or perhaps he sleeps and must be awakened. They cried aloud and cut themselves in their way with knives and lances until the blood gushed out on them. When midday was past, they prophesied until the time of the evening offering. But there was no voice, no answer, and nobody paid attention. 
Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. And all the people came near to him. He repaired the Lord's altar that had been thrown down. Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the Lord's word came, saying, Israel shall be your name. With the stones he built an altar in the Lord's name. He made a trench around the altar large enough to contain two seahs of seed. He put the wood in order and cut the bull in pieces and laid it on the wood. He said, Fill four jars with water and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. He said, Do it a second time. And they did it a second time. He said, Do it a third time. And they did it the third time. The water ran around the altar, and he also filled the trench with water. At the time of the evening offering, Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you, Lord, are God, and that you have turned their heart back again. Then the Lord's fire fell and consumed the burnt offering, the wood, the stones, and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces. They said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Don't let one of them escape. They seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and killed them there. Elijah said to Ahab, Get up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he bowed himself down on the earth and put his face between his knees. He said to his servant, Go up now and look toward the sea. He went up and looked, then said, There is nothing. He said, Go again, seven times. On the seventh time he said, Behold, a small cloud, like a man's hand, is rising out of the sea. He said, Go up, tell Ahab, Get ready and go down, so that the rain doesn't stop you. In a little while the sky grew black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. The Lord's hand was on Elijah, and he tucked his cloak into his belt and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. 1 Kings chapter 19 Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I don't make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. When he saw that, he arose and ran for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a juniper tree. Then he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. He laid down and slept under a juniper tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. He looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on the coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The Lord's angel came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. He arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, God's mountain. He came to a cave there, and camped there. And behold, the Lord's word came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of armies, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I, even I only, am left and they seek my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. Behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. 
after the earthquake a fire passed, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a still, small voice. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle, went out, and stood in the entrance of the cave. Behold, a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of armies. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. The Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. Anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, to be king over Israel. And anoint Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Mahola, to be prophet in your place. He who escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill. And he who escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I reserve seven thousand in Israel, all the knees of which have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth which has not kissed him. So he departed from there, and found Elisha the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelfth. Elijah went over to him and put his mantle on him. Elisha left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me please kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. He said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, and took the yoke of oxen, killed them, and boiled their meat with the oxen's equipment, and gave to the people, and they ate. Then he arose, and went after Elijah, and served him. 1 Kings chapter 20 Ben-Hadad the king of Syria gathered all his army together, and there were thirty-two kings with him, with horses and chariots. He went up and besieged Samaria, and fought against it. He sent messengers into this city to Ahab king of Israel, and said to him, Ben-Hadad says, Your silver and your gold are mine, your wives also and your children, even the best are mine. The king of Israel answered, It is according to your saying, my lord, O king, I am yours, and all that I have. The messengers came again and said, Ben-Hadad says, I sent indeed to you, saying, You shall deliver me your silver, your gold, your wives, and your children. But I will send my servants to you tomorrow about this time, and they will search your house and the houses of your servants. Whatever is pleasant in your eyes, they will put it in their hand and take it away. Then the king of Israel called all the elders of the land and said, Please notice how this man seeks mischief. For he sent to me for my wives and for my children and for my silver and for my gold, and I didn't deny him. All the elders and all the people said to him, Don't listen and don't consent. Therefore he said to the messengers of Ben-Hadad, Tell my lord the king, All that you sent for to your servant at the first I will do, but this thing I cannot do. The messengers departed and brought him back the message. Ben-Hadad sent to him and said, The gods do so to me, and more also, if the dust of Samaria will be enough for handfuls for all the people who follow me. The king of Israel answered, Tell him, don't let him who puts on his armor brag like he who takes it off. When Ben-Hadad heard this message as he was drinking, he and the kings in the pavilions, he said to his servants, Prepare to attack. So they prepared to attack the city. Behold, The prophet came near to Ahab king of Israel and said, The Lord says, Have you seen all this great multitude? Behold, I will deliver it into your hand today. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Ahab said, By whom? He said, The Lord says, By the young men of the princes of the provinces. Then he said, Who shall begin the battle? He answered, You. Then he mustered the young men of the princes of the provinces, and they were two hundred and thirty-two. After them he mustered all the people, even all the children of Israel, being seven thousand. They went out at noon. But Ben-Hadad was drinking himself drunk in the pavilions, he and the kings, the thirty-two kings who helped him. The young men of the princes of the provinces went out first, and Ben-Hadad sent out, and they told him, saying, Men are coming out from Samaria. He said, If they have come out for peace, take them alive. 
or if they have come out for war, take them alive. So these went out of the city, the young men of the princes of the provinces, and the army which followed them. They each killed his man. The Syrians fled, and Israel pursued them. Ben-Hadad the king of Syria escaped on a horse with horsemen. The king of Israel went out and struck the horses and chariots, and killed the Syrians with a great slaughter. The prophet came near to the king of Israel and said to him, Go, strengthen yourself, and plan what you must do, for at the return of the year the king of Syria will come up against you. The servants of the king of Syria said to him, Their god is a god of the hills. Therefore they were stronger than we, but let's fight against them in the plain, and surely we will be stronger than they. Do this thing. Take the kings away, every man out of his place, and put captains in their place. Muster an army like the army that you have lost, horse for horse and chariot for chariot. We will fight against them in the plain, and surely we will be stronger than they are. He listened to their voice and did so. At the return of the year, Ben-Hadad mustered the Syrians and went up to Aphek to fight against Israel. The children of Israel were mustered and given provisions, and went against them. The children of Israel encamped before them like two little flocks of young goats, but the Syrians filled the country. A man of God came near and spoke to the king of Israel and said, The Lord says, Because the Syrians have said, The Lord is a God of the hills, but he is not a God of the valleys. Therefore I will deliver all this great multitude into your hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. They encamped opposite each other for seven days. Then on the seventh day the battle was joined, and the children of Israel killed one hundred thousand footmen of the Syrians in one day. But the rest fled to Aphek, into the city, and the wall fell on twenty-seven thousand men who were left. Ben-Hadad fled and came into the city, into an inner room. His servant said to him, See now, we have heard that the kings of the house of Israel are merciful kings. Please let us put sackcloth on our bodies and ropes on our heads and go out to the king of Israel. Maybe he will save your life. So they put sackcloth on their bodies and ropes on their heads and came to the king of Israel and said, Your servant Ben-Hadad says, Please let me live. He said, is he still alive? He is my brother. Now the men observed it diligently and hurried to take this phrase, and they said, Your brother Ben-Hadad. Then he said, Go, bring him. Then Ben-Hadad came out to him, and he caused him to come up into the chariot. Ben-Hadad said to him, The cities which my father took from your father I will restore. You shall make streets for yourself in Damascus, as my father made in Samaria. I, said Ahab, will let you go with this covenant. So he made a covenant with him and let him go. A certain man of the sons of the prophets said to his fellow by the Lord's word, Please strike me. The man refused to strike him. Then he said to him, Because you have not obeyed the Lord's voice, behold, as soon as you have departed from me, a lion will kill you. As soon as he had departed from him, a lion found him and killed him. Then he found another man and said, Please strike me. The man struck him and wounded him. So the prophet departed and waited for the king by the way and disguised himself with his headband over his eyes. As the king passed by, he cried out to the king and he said, Your servant went out into the middle of the battle. And behold, a man came over and brought a man to me and said, Guard this man. If by any means he is missing, then your life shall be for his life, or else you shall pay a talent of silver. As your servant was busy here and there, he was gone. The king of Israel said to him, So shall your judgment be. You yourself have decided it. He hurried and took the headband away from his eyes, and the king of Israel recognized that he was one of the prophets. He said to him, The Lord says, because you have let go out of your hand the man whom I had devoted to destruction, therefore your life will take the place of his life, and your people take the place of his people. The king of Israel went to his house, sullen and angry, and came to Samaria.